Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Thriving Naturally Goddess Summit. Um, today, we are talking with Dr. JJ Purcell. Uh, she's a, a naturopathic physician, acupuncturist, author, and entrepreneur. She owned and operated a small chain of herb shops for over 13 years in both Portland, Oregon, and Brooklyn, New York. In 2014, she transitioned into writing and published her first book in 2015. Since retiring from retail, she has continued to write, speak, formulate, consult, and spend time seeing patients. You can follow her on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, although she is more likely to be out in the woods with her family and friends than updating her profiles. Uh, feel free to connect. Uh, via Dr. JJ Purcell at gmail.com, and we'll leave that in the link below. And if you'd like to learn more about herbal medicine, you can pick up one of her books here at JJ Purcell Books, and we'll also have that link for you. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. JJ. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. It's, you know, it's, it, the sun is shining here in Portland, which in December will take every minute that we can get. But we're just, you know, moving into this winter hibernation time, even though, you know, that the time and the year has been kind of a year of hibernating, we, re we really do honor the sacred time of moving inward and replenishing our energy during these winter months. So good to hear. Well, can you share with us, how did you get started? Yeah, sure. It's kind of a long story, but it's a good one. Um, you know, I was raised in Nebraska very different mentality than um, what is inside of me and in, in alignment with my true authentic self. So, um, you know, we were very Midwestern diet and, you know, lifestyle. And around my mid early 20s, um, I decided to go off the birth control pill. And I didn't have my period for nine months. And I went to doctor after doctor and nurse and you know different basic blood work and everyone said, oh, everything looks fine and you're normal and you're young, don't worry about it. And I thought, wow, I'm deeply connected to my femininity and to my regular moon cycles. And this is not right. <laughs> I should be having a cycle every month. So I kept persevering. And so I finally found um, an acupuncturist. There was one acupuncturist in the whole state of Nebraska, and they had to be an MD. Can you believe that? So we, I drove 60 miles each way to see this MD acupuncturist. But after one treatment, I had a cycle and I was hooked. And I thought, this is where, where I need to be. You know, I, I dove in head first and soaked up all of the acupuncture and oriental medicine studies and then um, decided to go to grad school, but wasn't quite ready for the financial endeavor. And so the universe guided me up to Bellingham, Washington, where I went into a little herb shop and the owner was there. And we talked and had tea for about two hours. And at the end of it, she offered me a job. And that became a wonderful um, mentorship. You know, whether she was meaning to mentor me or not, she was definitely my teacher. And I worked on her farm and in her shop and just learned so much, um, not just about the plants and the earth and how they're all connected, but the real spirituality of the plants. And after about um, two years, she came in the shop one day and said, okay, it's time to go. And I thought, oh, go get lunch or run to the bank. And she was like, no, it's time. It's time to go. And I said, oh, I don't want to go. And she said, I think you should be a naturopath. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I descended down into Portland and that began the journey of getting my naturopathic degree and my acupuncture. But about halfway through the program, I missed the plants. And I had been, you know, living in a very quiet, beautiful place up in Bellingham. And now I was thrust into the urban life and cement and not a lot of plants. And so halfway through my program, I thought, I'm going to open a shop. And so I used my student loans to put down the down payment for my rent 
and I ate a lot of ramen noodles and raw vegetables and opened the shop. And that's kind of just how it took off. There's, there's nothing like a community environment with an herb shop. Everybody comes in the herb shop, even if it's just for a second to, to check it out out of curiosity. But it's a true bridge in a community where people don't always have access to health care or they don't feel comfortable you know, going into a doctor's office to ask questions. We provide resources and we provided community and it was, it was just a wonderful, wonderful part of my life. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. So the first question I have for you is with all that's kind of going on in the world right now between just having the holidays and um, COVID and all of this stuff, um, how, oh, how do you recommend staying healthy and well? It's a really good question. And I, I really like it because it truly lends itself to the, the, the summit and also the title of the talk, which is reconnecting yourself you know, with natural digestion options. And as a naturopath, digestion is everything. Everything starts with digestion. That is, that is the root of health. And getting to know your body and getting to know its functions and trusting yourself is the best starting place. I often ask my question, my uh, patients, I'll get a long history and I'll look at any labs that they've brought in, but really when it gets down to the juicy part, it's when I ask the question, what do you think is going on? Because people know so much of the time while we live in this construct that the doctor has to tell you what's going on or the doctor has to provide a diagnosis and then we, we just accept that the doctor should be more of an educator or a camaraderie partnership working with you to navigate your health um, journey, right? I'm sure you believe that too. Yes. And yeah, so, absolutely. Yes, right. In your history and in your practice of Ayurvedic, that's like a main, I'm sure, a main part of your practice. So um, when I ask the question, what do you think is going on? I get these juicy nuggets, you know, that don't ever come out in the history. And it's like, often that's where I'll start because they, they often lead to the, to the truth of what's going on. But when I think about health and I think about gosh, this year and now, you know, whether we're watching this before the holidays or after the holidays or, or launching into a new year and like, what is this year going to bring us? There's yeah. There's a lot of avenues. I'm just going to keep talking while she's. Yeah, you keep laughing. Okay. So um, I like to provide my patients with lots of options um, because everyone's in a different place. You know, earlier this year, I was consumed with worry and concern and the, my health was the last thing on my mind. I was just trying to balance and maintain and so talking to yourself and checking in with where you are, what is really bothering you right now in your life and what is a realistic a, accomplishment or change or goal that you can make, that's where you start, right? Identifying one area of your life that's, that you can truly commit to. So perhaps that in, is eating more fruit, more dark leafy greens. Perhaps it's focusing on sleep, you know, shutting your computer and phone off 30 minutes before you get ready to do your bedtime routine. I say this with my patients all the time, and you can probably relate having a little one. How do we teach babies and little ones to sleep? We do it by routine. That doesn't change as an adult. If you give yourself cues, oh, I'm turning off my computer right now. Oh, I'm making a cup of tea. I'm dimming the lights. Those are all cues that start this routine that says, oh, we're, we're shutting down, getting ready for sleep and putting on my favorite silk pajamas, whatever it might be, right? 
So really kind of think in your life, what are those things that you, what's just one thing, just one thing, don't get overwhelmed. Um, maybe it's drink more water in your day. Um, so that's one thing I always like to start off with, if, you know, trying to reclaim just a, just a minute shift in the balance of health. I also really like to have herbs on hand. I am dedicated my life to plants and botanical medicine, and I just find them to be a strong ally for me. Um, everyone has different modalities that, that really resonate for them. And for me, herbs is a, is a strong one. So whether it's a tea or a tincture to have on hand or essential oils, um, you know, having them out, don't put them up in the cupboard, <laughs> have them sitting on your desk, on your kitchen counter, next to the sink where you wash your hands. All, you know, just have them there to just remind you to take them and, and, and have them support you in a way that you can. That's just so, so helpful for me. Now, getting back to the digestion piece, routine, 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 routine. <laughs> so our internal structure, our physical body loves routine. It loves to be on the same clock and pattern every single day. And what this does is it creates a automation so your physical body can just function in this beautiful way. And then your spirit and your mind can float off and dream and create and manifest and do these all these other things. If your body is on that automation cycle, then it's free to, to have that extra energy, right? So I suggest eating at the same time every day, sleeping at the same time, getting up, going to bed the same time every day. Try to exercise at the same time every day. Um, those are those are my nuts and bolts of trying to stay healthy. And the last one I have is have something to read. Have a good book, have a favorite magazine, whatever it is. There's so many studies that talk about your brain shifting when we read. And reading creates this joy inside of people. You know, whether it's a good fictional escape or, you know, for me, it's, you know, reading medical journeys, journals and having these aha moments, you know, my, my daughter just laughs at me, but I, I love learning. So find something that really brings you that joy. Turn off the TV, turn off the computer, and at least five minutes of just reading in a day, it, it does shift the brain in a, in a very unique way. Hello, you're a little one there. Yeah, I'm going to go get her. One second. Yeah. You get to meet her. It's always good to have babies in these summits, even spontaneous. Nothing should be perfect or planned. Everything should just be as Absolutely. life is. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Oh, how are Hello. you? Hi. Yeah. Did you wake up? Huh? Hi. You woke up. Much oh. than I was expecting. But <laughs> what to do, man? That's kind of how it is. It's how it is. And <gasps> that's okay, right? Because this is life. Yeah. This is life. It is. It is life. And it's, there's nothing more oh, precious. There's nothing more precious than life. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Well, Dr. JJ, you mentioned herbs as allies for having on hand, and you've written three books on herbal medicine and health. So that is, it's an apparent, it's apparently a passion of yours. Um, what herbs do you use to support the digestive system? Oh my gosh, about everything. <laughs> so let's just, let me just start first and let's just talk about digestion just for a quick second. Okay. So uh the one thing i will say about this year is i think people are slowing down with their eating that's an upside you know in my mind more people are cooking that's again an upside in my mind so what happens when we get hungry and when we eat 
So the first thing that happens ideally is you get, you start to notice that it's, oh, it's about that time that I, I need to think about my next meal, right? So you go into the kitchen and you start looking with your eyes. What are we, what am I going to make? That first, that's the first signal to the brain through the eyes. It gets a message to your brain that says, oh, we're going to, we're going to maybe eat, right? So you get out the cutting board and the knife or the, you know, bread, if you're making sandwich, whatever it is. Next thing is you start to smell things, right? It goes right up through that olfactory. And again, second message, we are going to eat. So that message gets sent down to your stomach and your stomach says, oh yeah, we're going to eat. And it clicks on the hydrochloric acid. Yes, we're going to eat some food, but we've got to have that hydrochloric acid so when the food gets to the stomach, we can get to work, right? So then you start to eat. Ideally, you chew your food enough before it gets down to the stomach. So you chew that food and it gets into the stomach and then the stomach turns on. It turns on like an oven, heats everything up and like a washing machine. It starts tumbling all the food and that hydrochloric acid that's waiting for it. So then it starts breaking apart. And when it starts breaking apart, it's the body says, oh, that's a carbohydrate. That's a fat, that's a protein. And then it starts talking to the pancreas, which is sitting next to the stomach. And it says, yo, we need some enzymes to break down carbohydrates. We need some enzymes to break down proteins. So it starts squirting these enzymes, right? So it breaks it down even further. So by the time it leaves the stomach, and it goes down to the small intestine, the small intestine can decide this is nutrient. We're going to soak every last bit of that one up and put it back up in the body, or this is waste. We're going to shuttle it down to the large intestine and the kidneys to get it out of the body. That's how digestion ideally works and what we're shooting for. Okay. Now years of eating on the run, eating too fast, grabbing and going, doing emails and calls and working while we're eating kind of puts a damper on that process. A lot of times there's no hydrochloric acid by the time the food reaches the stomach. So then food is in the stomach and it's like, whoa, wait a minute, I just woke up from a nap and there's food here. I got to catch up, right? So it's trying to make the hydrochloric acid, but by that point it's already moving out of the stomach. So it reaches the small intestine still in somewhat of a whole form. So the small intestine's got to pick up its night job. Its night job is, oh, I got to break this apart and figure out what this is. So it starts the long journey in the small intestine. And so it's trying to figure out, is this a nutrient? Is this a waste? I don't know. And the longer it sits in that small intestine, inflammation goes up, up, up. Gas and bloating gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we start losing nutrients. We no longer end up getting a lot of those nutrients because at some point it just clears it out and says, I can't do this anymore and shoots it all out to waste. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I'm looking at herbs and I'm thinking about the digestive process, I'm kind of talking to my patients and, and previously my customers, where in the digestive system are we maybe having a problem? And a lot of times it's inflammation. We have mm -hmm. so much inflammation in the gut that we first need to just bring that down. And that inflammation can be done with a really simple and tasty juice um, that I call it, or some people, the old name for it is gruel, which is a horrible name. Who wants to take gruel, right? But No, thank you. <laughs> no, it just sounds slimy and yucky and oh, mushy. Um, but I do think of that book, Good Night Moon, and they have a bowl of mush, right? That's they call it mush in the book. But it's kind of, the, it's, it's thinner. It's more of a juice. So you get slippery elm and you mm. simmer it. So like a two tablespoons of slippery elm in uh, like 12 ounces of water. Cover it and simmer it for about eight minutes and then strain it out. And then you can, you can put a little cinnamon in there and you can also then also um, steep some comfrey leaf in there. 
okay? Mm. And then you strain out the comfrey leaf and then you have this wonderful slippery elm juice and it's cinnamon, so it's really tasty. It goes in, it coats from the esophagus all the way down to the stomach, all the way down to the small intestine and really helps that mucosal barrier heal. So the comfrey and the cinnamon and the slippery elm are all working together. Even though you think, oh, comfrey's just in there for, or sorry, cinnamon's just in there for flavor. No, cinnamon is a wonderful herb for the digestive system. So it goes down that whole track and can really help eliminate the initial level of inflammation so you can start to heal. Now, if you've had long-term digestive stuff going on, and you think that maybe there's like H. pylori or another type of infection kind of living in your gut, then, then I really recommend golden seal. Even though we have to be really careful, you know, golden seal got over, over wild harvested and over cultivated. And so we've got to be really careful that we're choosing for, from sustainable sources. Um, there's nothing that works better than golden seal, in my opinion. It is a mucosal uh, hero. And our whole digestive tract is one big mucosal train. So it goes in there, it errat can eradicate um, infection, really works specifically on that bacterial, um, negative bacterial growth that might be happening up there, down there, and heals and eradicates um, Jethro, uh, Jethro, uh, Jethro Kloss, he wrote a, a, gosh, I'm totally blanking, the herbalist book in like the 17 or 1800s, but the book is still around. It's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. Um, and it talks a lot about the golden seal. Um, go back to the old herbalists. They, they had some good insights back there. And we tend to kind of like go with the bigger, better, newer, but we have a lot to learn with those with those older older herbs like herbs. So the last thing I'll say is golden seal. If you're someone who tends to really work, um, have that inconsistent bowel, but also a little bit lo looser. You know, if you're really on the looser end, start a golden seal tincture for a little while. You know, one dropper full three times a day for three weeks. See what happens. It could be that again, the berberines that's in golden seal, also in Oregon grape, can be really helpful for toning that digestive tract um, mm -hmm. and giving that peristalsis uh, reflex a little bit more tone. Um, and sometimes with the loose stool, it, there's just no tone and it's just like flooding through, but it could be a bacterial thing in there. And so I really like the golden seal for that. And if people are wanting to get sustainably harvested golden seal, they can get herbs from you still, correct? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm out of that. I, I moved on, um, but there's lots of good resources. So of course, Mountain Rose is a great one. And um, I really love Oregon's Wild Harvest. They are very into biodynamic uh, farming. I've been out to that farm several times. I've met the family. The children have now taken over the business and I really respect their practices. Wow, so great to, to know just a few resources. Um, so can I ask what other tips might you have um, that our listeners can benefit from? So particularly with the goal, with the digestive tract, you know, the biggest thing is the digestive tract, if it's talking to you, it's talking to you. <laughs> Don't ignore it. If you have gas, if you have bloating, if you have cramping, if you have mucus in your stool, if you have inconsistent bowels, if you have no bowel movements, like this, the, the gastrointestinal tract, if you are, <laughs> yes. That's right. That's exactly what I'm saying. The gastrointestinal tract is giving you a symptom. You are a fortunate soul because so many people end up with major gastrointestinal pathologies with no sign or symptom or warning at all. And all of a sudden they find themselves with big problems. And so if you are a fortunate enough to have a symptom arising, take advantage of that. Start to, to do some research, reach out, 
to your healthcare practitioner, whoever that may be, and get some help and get some, you know, um, uh, support in your journey to kind of start teasing away of what what might be going on, because um, they're they're clues. All they're all they're all clues. But again, one of my tried and true castor oil packs. I love mm -hmm. them. I love them. I love them. And. You know, I often will just slather it on at night um, before I go to bed and put that towel down and put that heating pad on and just fall asleep and then throw it on the floor at some point in the middle of the night. But it's so soothing. And again, if you have a lot of inflammation going on or if you just need some help moving some of those toxins out of your body, it's a tried and true. Absolutely. Oh, thank you for that. Well, it, it's been so great just to, to share this time with you and, and to just listen to all, all of your words of wisdom. Um, and, and I just want to let everyone know that um, for, for our listeners, you're, you're having a promotional offer um, of 10% off your Women's Apothecary book. Um, and I'm sure that that's full of a lot of gems. Um, because of how you got introduced or, or how your journey began um, in, the, in the world of natural medicine. Um, and, then, and then you're also offering a, a free digital copy of your self-care rituals system. Um, and people can, can access those uh, directly from you. Yeah. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, they can just send me an email and I'd be happy to um, set all that up for you. Not, not a problem at all. And, you know, the self-care rituals is just something, um, Sean, who's the photographer for my books, we were really sitting around in, you know, via Zoom in April, just like, we want to do something. What do we do? Like, and so we just created this free, beautiful PDF. I say beautiful because she just makes everything beautiful um and it just talks about self-care ritual for the respiratory system so you know keeping our respiratory and lung health at the top of its game right now can be can be a really good yeah hi yeah. thank you for helping me do my talk today yeah. thank you for being a part of this girl thank <laughs> you so much dr jj oh um really such a invaluable an invaluable uh, talk with you and so much information. Anytime. And, you know, feel free to reach out. Anyone who's listening, I am pretty good about, you know, answering emails during this time. I just want to stress you're not alone. If you're feeling alone, if you're feeling um, sad, if you've got something going on, please reach out. I am always available. Um, I really do make it a point to uh, connect with the people that that reach out. So please don't feel alone and just know that there is someone here um, for you should you need. Yeah, yeah, I just want to second that she is so good at getting back to you. Um, so absolutely reach out to Dr. JJ. Um, I can't, I can't talk more about how magnificent her her gifts are to the world. And, all of take, ours, all of our guests. <laughs> all of our guests. It takes a village to make a it world. Does. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank and you. I, I really hope to, to talk to you again. And Anytime. To, to reconnect. Anytime. Thank you. Bye. Bye.